Hello everyone, this is going to be a fairly quick lesson. I just want to make a few minor adjustments to our search overlay before we move on and continue to learn more about the REST API. The first change I want to make in this lesson has to do with the starter HTML of our overlay. So I'm referring to just this main overlay div and the actual text input field here. Now at the moment, this HTML lives in our footer.php file. However, now that we know a bit more about JavaScript, I think it would make more sense to move this HTML into our search.js file. It will help us stay organized and also if someone comes to the website and they have JavaScript disabled, in that case, it doesn't make sense to send them the extra few bytes for this HTML uh, because they will never even see it or be able to open up the overlay in the first place. So long story short, let's jump into our text editor and in our theme folder, let's jump into footer.php and if we scroll down to the very bottom, here we see the search overlay div. So why don't we go ahead and move this HTML out of this footer PHP file and into our search.js file. So I'm just going to select this entire search overlay div and cut it into my clipboard. Go ahead and save this file. And then let's jump into our JavaScript modules folder and open up search.js. So the question now is, how can we use JavaScript to add that HTML to the very bottom of the page, right? We want to add it on to the end of the body element. Well, here's how I would do that. I would just create a new method in this search.js file. So I would just scroll down to the very bottom. At the moment, this is the last method I've got listed. So this is the curly bracket for this method. And this is the closing curly bracket for the entire class. So how about in between those, we can just create a brand new method. We can name it whatever we want. Why don't we call it add search HTML, parentheses, curly brackets. And within the body of this method, I would just use jQuery to select the overall body element. And then I would use the jQuery append method. Append is how you can add HTML to the very end of an element semicolon at the end here. And then within the parentheses for append, instead of quotes to create a string, instead of quotes, I would use backticks because then we can break down to new lines just like regular HTML. So just to stay organized, in between the backticks, I would drop down. And now it's just as simple as pasting in our clipboard. Okay, at this point, this method is good to go. But remember that the code within a function isn't actually executed until you call the function. So now that we've created this method, let's go back up to the very top of this file. And in the constructor function, we need to actually call and run the method. Now in this case, the ordering does matter. So let's call that new method up at the very top of our constructor. So we can just say this dot add search HTML. The reason we need to do this at the very beginning of our constructor is because otherwise these elements that we're looking for here won't even exist yet, right? So for example, this search field property is looking for an element that has an ID of search term, but that element won't even exist in the browser's DOM until this code has had a chance to run. Okay. So at this point we can go ahead and save this file. And if I jump over to the browser and open up the overlay, it still works. And I can still search for biology. And the results still make sense. Perfect. All right, let's change gears. And we actually just saw an example of the next thing I want to change. So for example, if I now search for lorem in terms of lorem ipsum, we saw that the loader spinner icon displays for quite a long time. And that's because I never adjusted it lower from its initial 2000 millisecond value. So let's do that right now. So back in our code in search.js, if we scroll down to our typing logic method on this line of code where we are saying this dot typing timer equals, we see that I'm still using a value of 2000 milliseconds. And I think that's a bit too long. 
So I'm gonna change this to 750 milliseconds, right? Just three quarters of a second. And let's see, I think that should feel a lot better. So now when I search, you can see as soon as I stop typing, it's a much shorter wait. And I think that feels a lot nicer for end users. Okay, let's change gears again. The next thing I wanna work on now is when someone opens up the search overlay, I think the text field should be automatically focused, meaning my cursor should already be placed in that field automatically so I can start typing, instead of having to actually manually click onto the text field. So to make that happen, back in our search.js file, let's scroll down to our open overlay method, right? This is responsible for adding the class that makes the overlay div visible. So as soon as these two lines of code that are responsible for adding classes run, right after those lines, on a new line here, let's just say this dot search field, right? This is a property we created up in the constructor that points towards the text field. And then on that element, we can just use the jQuery method named focus. And that will place the user's cursor within that field and they can immediately begin typing. However, if I go ahead and save this and test it out in the browser, you'll notice that if I open the overlay, the text field is not successfully focused. I'm typing and nothing's happening and I still have to manually click on to that field. Now this might not be the case in all web browsers, but for a lot of browsers, including this version of Google Chrome, the text field is not being successfully focused because when this new line of code ran, where we are trying to focus the field, the overlay as a whole was not even visible yet. Because you'll notice that the overlay does not appear or disappear immediately. It takes about 300 milliseconds to fade in and fade out. So back in our code, instead of trying to focus the text field immediately as soon as the open overlay method fires, instead, why don't we wait 301 milliseconds so that CSS transition is complete? Or in other words, let's wait until the web browser actually considers this element visible before we try to focus it. So here's what I would do. Let's cut this new line into our clipboard, this line with the dot focus. And in its place, let's just set up a set timeout. And remember, set timeout takes two arguments. The first is a function that you want to run. And the second argument is how many milliseconds you want to wait before actually running that. So why don't we wait 301 milliseconds? That will be just enough time for that CSS fade in and fade out to be complete. And then instead of the X, let's just create an anonymous function. So function parentheses curly brackets. And then within the curly brackets, you can just paste in your clipboard. Now this code will indeed work, but I wanna show you how we can save a bit of extra typing here. Instead of actually spelling out the word function, we can use the ES6 arrow function syntax. So to do that, we can just delete the word function, but keep the parentheses right after it. So delete function. We don't need any parameters, so we can leave the parentheses empty. Uh, but right after the parentheses, we can just say equal sign greater than to create an arrow symbol. And then if we're going to write all of the code on a single line like this, we do not need the curly brackets to indicate the body of the function. So since we're on a single line, let's just delete these curly brackets here. And in that case, we also don't need the ending semicolon right here. Okay, so now the code is a bit cleaner. Let's go ahead and save this and test it out. If I click onto the overlay, Perfect, you can see the text cursor is already blinking and I can just immediately start typing. This is especially nice because now if someone uses the S key shortcut to open up the overlay, they don't even need to touch their mouse. They can just immediately begin typing. All right, now let's change gears again and let's work on the final edit for this lesson. I wanna set things up so that if you perform a search and then close the overlay, and then reopened the overlay, I think it would be nice if the text field was emptied out for you so you could just immediately begin searching for something else instead of having to manually select it all and delete it. So to make that happen, back in our code, 
right before the set timeout line, let's just add a new line of code and we can just target the search field. So this dot search field. And then let's use jQuery's val, which stands for value. Let's use the val method. And then we can just set it to an empty pair of single quotes. Let's add a semicolon at the end of the line and then go ahead and save that. So now I can open up the overlay, search for biology. Maybe I'm not happy with the results, so I can close the overlay, keep browsing the site. And then if I open up the overlay again, the field is automatically emptied for me and I can just perform another search. Perfect. And that's going to bring this lesson to a close. In our next lesson, we will learn more about the WordPress REST API. Let's keep things rolling and I will see you then.